This is Black Lives Matter. Manchester stands up. A snapshot into the protest in Manchester on the Saturday, the 6th of June, 2020. In support of the Black Lives Matter movement. This follows the senseless murder of George Floyd and many other black people at the hands of police brutality. May they rest in peace. Please stand together. Please stand together. My name is Loti Nambombe and I am 32 years old. I came to England 22 years ago now and I've lived in Manchester for 20 of those years. My early years in Manchester going up to the gym, I remember being racially abused, people shouting things across the street while me and my friends were just minding our own business. It was quite a normal reoccurrence, so it was every day you just expected it. It was that bad to the point we used to just end up not going to the gym and it was every day. It's things like going into the shop and, and being ignored by a member of staff while the next person who's a different colour gets uh, spoken to and myself just being ignored. I'm here today, I want our voices to be heard. I think it's time for, for everyone to, to kind of open their eyes, see that racism is a global problem. Yeah, obviously it's happening in the US and it's massive what's happening out there. Um, that's not to say it's not happening here. Um, it, it's solidarity and it's also to educate everyone. Let's educate ourselves on the history and, and what is going on. A pandemic is global, but this is a pandemic. Racism is a pandemic. I feel racism is a problem that's been going a lot longer than any virus that you can talk about. Um, and, you know, we are using the right steps to be safe. You know, everyone's walking around with masks. In the middle of a pandemic, racism can't stop. You know, you can't just decide that it's got to stop and you can't protest. To be honest, I've never been to, to one of these before. So I'm anxious, nervous, but also confident that we can make our voices heard. Black lives do matter. And we're not saying that only black lives matter, we're saying that we matter too. And that's what it's about. It's about that we want to be treated as equal as well. My name's Default to remember, I go by Nikki, and I'm almost 22 years old. Not too long ago, I moved here from America. As a child, I remember kids asking me why I'm the color that I am, but my mother is white. I asked her the same question. Kids are taught from a young age to be racist and it needs to be changed. Coming to the UK, subtle racism started to become noticeable. I've been followed around stores just to make sure. I've been told my hair is a lot to handle by hairdressers. I've been called horrible names by random people, but I've let it roll off my shoulders. I may have been the token loud black woman, but I am sick and tired of staying quiet. I'm sick and tired of being a target, a threat, and immediately judged. Now, even though I'm alive to go home and see my family, it's not the same for George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Nina Pop, Armand Arbery, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Mike Brown, Eric Gardner, and Sandra Bland, and so many more that I cannot say in one sitting. Right now, I feel proud. Countries from across the world are in their towns, fed up about what is happening. The fact that it's 2020 and we're still protesting is a bit ridiculous. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm 22 years old. I should be worried about my education, not about my life, my friends' lives, my friends' lives back home. Sick and tired, really. The fact that it's happening during a pandemic is a different thing. If, if the government is letting us enjoy the beaches and people are okay with that, they need to fix our priorities then. My name is Davis Okolia and I'm 22 years old. So I'm here at the protest today because I want to be heard. I want our voices to be heard. I really think that with this movement we can actually make a change once and for all because this has been going on for too long and we are tired of it and we really do hope to make a change in the world. Today at the protest we've marched through Manchester, we've marched through Piccadilly, Dean's Gay and everyone was holding their banners up shouting Black Lives Matter together. Basically we supporting each other. And uh, Manchester showing love and support towards this Black Lives Matter movement. I am overwhelmed. This is like the first time I'm at a protest. I was talking to my friend and I was telling him that if my kids were to ask me what did I do during these periods, I would proudly tell them that I went out to protest to make my voice heard and to try and be part of the change in this world. My name's Tibi Ansano and I'm 25 years old. Because like, I'm mixed race, my dad's from Sierra Leone, so that's like the west of Africa. So he's always taught me the, the oppression side of you know the African roots of mine. So when my dad was growing up, he was born here. And then, this is quite tragic actually, but when they were like seven years old, my brother got run over with a lawnmower by a racist guy, and um, that was in Fallowfield. My dad never told me that, he only told me that when I was in my 20s, but 
The other incident where he got stopped by the police, that was in Longside, and he's quite um, a passionate guy, and he's quite muscular and big, and he talks a lot with his hands. I think there was two police officers there on shift, and then just came up to my dad and then and antagonised him, and it was like, stop speaking with your hands, stop making all this commotion, and, and there was quite a lot of witnesses to see what was happening. They tear gas my dad in the face, and then they did it to my uncle Bernard as well, and then they were battering them with batons and then they called I think it was another three police vans just jumped on them arrested them he was locked up for like a few days and then my dad took it to trial and he, he won the case on discrimination but they still kept the job so that's always stuck with me and when people say racism isn't in the UK or the police are innocent here so we've got this stigma about like it's all in the US and it's not my name is Natasha March and I'm 40 years old. My experiences of racism in the UK, I'm so horrified by it, I've turned it into a career. I'm currently in the final year of my PhD, so basically black and indigenous human rights and how British colonisation has affected black and brown people all over the world. Just six weeks ago, I felt the racism in Didsbury in Manchester at Fever Point and I phoned my friend up crying. I said, I don't think I can do this anymore. Just two minutes on the bus, you know, just down the road on Wimslow, there would always be somebody trying to tell me off. And just as I was at Fever Point at home, George Floyd died. But for four weeks before that, I started to put down every racial aggression I got from a white person, and I put in 16 counts of racism in one week in my diary. The week that George Floyd died, I didn't get any. I had people smiling at me instead. It's changed everything for now, but this time, I think the difference is the youth. In 2020, the youth, they've got their argument in place. They've been raised in a different way. The youth now, the millennials, they're fearless. And I was crying because I saw all the justice youth out, black and white, and I said to a 16-year-old girl that set this up, she and others have done what my generation couldn't do. So now, let us unite to fight against racism and say with me, black lives so when I made that speech, I think that was 40 years of pain and anger and hurt that I felt. It was so natural to do and it was so natural to say because I've held that in for 40 years. I've got a message to everyone who's going to listen to this. We need to keep the momentum going. This cannot be a phase. Racism is not a fad. And protest comes in all different forms. It doesn't have to be speeches, and it could be helping your neighbour who's brown and black. It could be challenging a racist colleague at work. It could be just as simple as reading books and just reading little bits of social media to enlighten yourselves so you understand that it's not black people attacking white people, it's black people trying to be equal in society. Woo!